Hi everyone, welcome to Murders in Paradise. I'm Jen, joined as always by Jared Dad. Good evening. And we're also joined by a lot of panting dogs. It's not me, I promise. <laughs> They're very excited. Um, I'll let you know if I start panting, it's not me. <laughs> so uh, we're recording episode three right now for the second time. I screwed up GR Dad's audio on episode two. Nobody needs to know the behind the scenes magic. I, I just want to explain. Like episode two, you sounded real quiet because for some reason I only recorded my microphone. That's because I was standing in the other room yelling. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I was... Totally not your fault. It was me standing in the other room yelling no i just screwed it up and then last night we're like okay let's record a couple podcasts i have two episodes ready so let's record them and we recorded episode three and then i was listening to it and i only recorded my microphone again even though i tested it at the beginning i could have gone into the room and yelled (laughs) if i'd known i would have helped i would have helped yeah well that's not what happened so I don't know why you're doing this, mea culpa. Nobody needs to know that you make mistakes. Well, the good news is that not only are we going to get more GR Dad, everyone is a fan of the GR Dad reactions to my brutal stories, uh, <laughs> but we went out to dinner before this and drank a pitcher of sangria, so we're both a little more animated. Again, this inside baseball has to stop. <laughs> not everyone has to know everything about everybody all look, the time. Look, man, this is just how it is. This is a whole different generation. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, welcome to Murders in Paradise. This week, we're doing the story of Shirley Garvin, collected from Forensic Files, which it turns out everyone is a big fan of, which of course you are if you like true crime, because Forensic Files is on all the time. Do they have a distinctive um, opening melody or dun, dun, something? Dun, 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 no, that's pretty good. Beat it out. That's pretty good. The, the scat definitely gets it, gets it going. <laughs> yeah, good work. All right, hang hang on a second. Hang on. Beat it out. <laughs> They're probably going to sue us for me using that, but holy no, crap. It's satire. Mike and Shirley Garvin. Mike is 62, Shirley is 55 in 2003 when our story takes place. At that point, they have been married for 14 years. Spoiler. One of them does not get older. That's true. One of them stops at 55. Mm. Oh. Oh, I just gave it away. (laughs) It's okay. I mean, generally, (laughs) the title is going to be, the title of the episodes will be the victim's name unless we have a serial killer. So the title of this episode is Shirley Garvin. So uh, (sighs) fortunately, it's not not going to work out well for her. Uh, it becomes obvious very early in our story. Wouldn't be talking about her if she were still around. So uh, Shirley and Shirley grew up in Washington D.C., our other hometown. Part time in the Keys, part time in Washington D.C. She moved to Virginia Beach, and in 1989, she got married to Mike Garvin. Uh, who, they've been married for 14 years at the time of our story. They live in Jacksonville, Florida, which is at the top of Florida, like by the Georgia border. Um, on the east side. If you're going down 95 to get to Florida, that's like your first big city in Florida. Yep, and you don't have to go very far into Florida to get to Jacksonville. It's right up there at the top. Mm -hmm. So uh, Shirley and Mike live there, and in January of 2003, they take a vacation to Key West. Now, Key West is also in Florida, but it's just about as far away from Jacksonville as you can get. I think it is as far as you can drive. That's like a easy drive right that's like four hours eight, away or it's so- eight hours yeah. we have done that drive many times i mean if you were north of there you could drive drive from dc to almost maine in that time yeah i mean you like florida it's one state and if you live kind of i mean we live in the Adman- mid-atlantic but you get to the northeast you cross states real fast yeah. no florida is giant and you're driving the Full absolute length of Florida. It's kind of like Texas or California, where you can drive all day and all night and still be in the same state. Yep. We've done that. I mean, when we've, we've left our house in the Keys, and we feel like we've driven all day, and we make it to Jacksonville, and it's like, God damn it, we're still in Florida. We've driven all day. We can't make it. We can't even stretch this till you know to get to the Keys. No, it's like we do Florida, and then we maybe get into Georgia on day one, and then we do Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, D.C., Maryland on the last day. Yeah. Uh, So Florida is real big, and Jacksonville is about as far as you can get from Key West in Florida. So they drive this eight-hour drive. They go down to Key West. Because they drive. 
You could they fly. Drive. You could actually legitimately fly. There are flights, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's plenty of flights. I mean, we get dogs, so we drive, but you could fly. Absolutely could fly from Jacksonville uh, to Key West. But they drive, and uh, they get to Key West. They stay overnight, and the next... So they're staying at the Quality Inn Key West. So if you're driving into Key West on Route 1, you ca- cross the Cow Key Bridge, and you take a right towards the car dealerships, the fast food restaurants. It's not as like sketchy as I make it sound, but it is the part of Key West that's not like super charming old school. It's not charming. I would have said that too. Like yeah. it's still Key West and it, there's water and there's sailboats and it's palm trees. It's still a lot better than like, you know, anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, New Jersey. But <laughs> Sorry, New Jersey. But it's but it, within Key West, it's not the charming quaint downtown mm-hmm. Hemingway house having neighborhood. Yeah, it's like a four lane road, and the Home Depot's there. Um, yep. Anything that's it, there's not a ton of chains anywhere in the Keys, even in Key West. Um, but anything like the world's slowest McDonald's drive through <laughs> is there. TM. Oh my God. It we is. have gotten in that line, and I'm like, dear dad, start the timer. And there's like two people in front of us, and we get up there, and we're like, two Diet Cokes, please. 25 minutes later, we're not out of the drive through yeah, lane. I mean, they're just, they have other priorities than efficiency. It's unclear what it is, but it regularly takes 20 minutes oh, to get a Diet Coke. I think it's ganja. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Not accusing anyone at the Key West McDonald's. No, they're all, when you get to the window, they're all very wonderful. Yeah, they're real nice. I just don't know what takes them so long. Sometimes it'll be like, I'll be like, dear dad. It took me two minutes to go through the drive-thru to get my Diet Coke. Like, what, what the hell is going on? What? You must have been somewhere else. Yeah, but it often takes 20 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, there's a couple fast food restaurants. They just put in a Sonic, which is a big deal. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's great. And, uh, yeah, McDonald's, watch your back. Yep. A couple car dealerships. There's also some hotels and stuff up there. The Quality Inn, which is where Mike and Shirley Garvin stayed, was up there uh, right as you get into Key West. And May so not exist anymore? It has closed since then. Um, and... I mean, there's some some decent hotels up there in the new part of the island, but most of like where you want to stay if you want the Key West experience is in Old Town and it's not there. So it tends to be more affordable hotels, which doesn't mean they're crappy. Yeah. But it's just you're you're kind of farther it's away. A, it's a bit of a mismatch too. There aren't too many like big hotels in Old Town Key West. They're all inns and bread and breakfasts and and more. Lots of bed and breakfasts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, local and smaller places so if, if you want to stay like a hilton or something that's you're right. probably not staying inside the old town key west i don't think there's any chain hotels the margaritaville hotel is like the closest you get to a <laughs> yeah. chain hotel uh which yeah. maybe has a parent uh we stay at ocean key i mean now we have a house but when we would stay there it feels a little bit more like a you know like a hilton or a marriott or i'm, I'm just using or you know yeah to, as a proxy for chains yeah though they're, the, the, they're Pretty much all independent if you're in Old Town. Yeah, and small. I mean, like and small. bed and breakfast, small, in. Yeah, yeah. So Margaritaville, Ocean Key, uh, there's a couple other hotels that are bigger that have like maybe 100 rooms. But there's there's no high rises. There's nothing giant yeah, that's right. in there. So anyway, so they're staying at the Quality Inn, which is crappy. And also <laughs> in like the not so charming part. It is. It's, I saw adequate oh my god i saw pictures of it i like i knew it was closed but i googled it and it's like real motel oh, looking like yeah. cheap beds fireproof bed spreads and like you yeah i want the blue light on those bed spreads no yeah. exactly that's what it looked like um but anyway they check in there and and that's a, a little weird on its own because shirley has a lot of money her parents have died even though she's only 55 so her parents wouldn't have been that old they died left her almost a million dollars in inheritance. Uh, she, her friends say that she tends to wear a lot of expensive jewelry. She has a Rolex watch. Good anytime, for Shirley. Yeah, anytime she's out, she's wearing her diamonds. Um, she's real financially secure. I don't I don't know if she worked or, you know, if she just kind of had family money. Um, but she's relatively well off between the two of them. Doesn't sound like the kind of lady who would have stayed at like the cheap ass quality mm. inn. They said, uh, you know, she was like a world champion shopper. Like she, she'd go she out. Had friends. I mean, she was like social, right? 
Yeah, so in Jacksonville, she was kind of the life of the party. She would always be organizing social events, Hmm. tons of friends. Um, I think she was in a country club, but if she wasn't, she may as well have been where she just like had this huge circle of people that she was with all the time. So people one of these person, yeah. super extroverts, like always bringing people together, hmm. um, tons of friends that she was really close to that she talked to Yeah, a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, they're like, oh, she would just, she'd shop all day. <laughs> like she'd go out and she'd shop for like eight hours. And even if she didn't come home with anything, it was a great day. She, cause she just loved to like be out shopping, like looking at stuff. Um, oh, which also means you wouldn't stay at the quality in like up there oh, yeah. no shopping, in Key West. Right? Cause like all the charming parts of Key West with like the artist shops and all, all the stuff you think of on Duval street, basically and around there, that's an old town and Key West isn't that big, but it's a couple miles walk from where, from kind of the Kauke bridge near where this hotel was into old town. Like you'd take a taxi. It's like if, I mean, this is a bad analogy, but it'd be like going to you know, New York City to shop and staying in New Jersey or something across yeah. the river. Yeah. And it's like, you can do that, but you got to take a cab or you got to find like yeah. some transportation into it. Um, and if you're on like a little island like Key West, you maybe just want to stay by where the stuff is that you want to do. Yeah, because otherwise you're taking like a little Vespa or something. And that's like, um, you know, probably yeah. not what, the, no, I don't know. Yeah. So in any case, all right. So they go from Jacksonville to Key West, uh, stay at this quality inn. Mike reports that he just gets kind of takeout food for dinner that he brings back to the room. I can't, he got it from a bar and I can't tell if it's like the bar that was at the Quality Inn or if it's like a place, you know, a couple doors down. Unlikely that the Quality Inn had like a food and bar place. Definitely would not have been a room service place. Yeah. Um, Brings that back to the room, and then the next day he goes out, I think, trying to get some breakfast, and he comes back to the room, and Shirley's gone. And so he's like, maybe she went for a walk, maybe she went to the beach, maybe she went shopping, uh, but it's a little weird that she'd just leave without him. But then he finds that her purse is still in the room, so she's obviously not shopping. Probably hasn't, like, gone to the beach or anything without any of her stuff. Um, But he, so he's a little worried he waits a couple hours. Eventually, he calls the police and reports her missing. You know, we're down here on vacation. She's gone. All her stuff is here. I don't know where she is. And this so, is 2003. 2003. So, with no cell phones. Back no, then? like maybe a flip phone. Yeah. Um, but lots of people didn't have them. Because you and I, we text each other. I would know right. if you went shopping. Totally, I would just text you. But in 2003, I mean, I I definitely had a cell phone then, but. I mean, I remember, this was a couple years before, in 2001, in, on Valentine's Day in 2001, I was at a conference in Switzerland. Hmm. And I just remember this because, like, all of the European TVs were talking about how this was going to be the day that the most text messages of the year were sent. <laughs> because everybody was going to it was, like, real special that I would send you an I love you text on <laughs> Valentine's Day. Like, people just didn't text Ooh, all the time. And yeah. so it was like... Oh, because of cost and everything. Yeah, I mean, you get charged per text, and yeah. it was, you know, like, 10 cents a text <sighs> or something. And so it's like, sure, for Valentine's Day, I'll text you I love you. But it was like this whole big story about how there's going to be like this big spike in text messages because it's valentine's day wow. uh now that was 2001 so this is a couple of years later but still people really aren't they're not texting like they do i think now. 2007 2008 i had a blackberry i think that was like my first cell oh phone. gee or dad you had a blackberry when i met you i had to pest Dear Dad and I met in 2011, and he had this blackberry. It was a holster. It was oh a holster. God. It was so cool. You did, you <laughs> it was did a have plastic a holster. Hol- hard plastic holster. It was so cool. And I was like, <laughs> "Is that from 2003? What is this thing?" And he'd all so be like, good. with his little thumbs, like, "Deep, deep, 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 Work pays for this. Oh, my God. Work was paying for iPhones, though. And then, like, eventually, I mean, it took a couple of years. It's like 2013, maybe, by the time you get your first iPhone. And then they've got the thumbprint recognition. And for, like, three months, I tell this story at work. For three months, he's like, oh, my God, this thumbprint recognition is the best thing ever invented. Because before, he's, like, typing in this, like, 15-character password <laughs> so with a little thumb on, like, teeny tiny keyboard. Shut up. <laughs> I was real good on the keyboard, the actual keyboard <laughs> of the BlackBerry. 
Yeah. This haptic stuff is meh. It took you a little while to get used to it. I'm still internally resisty. Well, my my original offer to buy you one of those little clip-on keyboards. <laughs> Don't spit out that bourbon. That still stands. I can. Get, they have those on Amazon. I'll get you one if you want. Uh... <laughs> We don't have to give everything behind the scenes in every one of these episodes, you know. <laughs> Everybody, you need to know I'm keeping the really good stories to myself. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Shirley is gone. She's not in the hotel room. Yeah. Uh, the Key West police. And it's right by the water. I mean, the quality, and there's water all around there Key is, West. Yes, and that's you, right. if you went like 150 yards the wrong direction, you'd be in the water. Absolutely. I mean, there are sailboats and stuff. It's pretty busy water, but yeah, you'd be splashed. Yeah, someone would probably notice, though. There's a, there's a lot of people out kind of all hours of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially early in the morning. People are doing, like, yoga and stuff. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, and yeah. frankly, there's a lot of homeless or pseudo-homeless people Dude. in Key West. Yep. Because uh, it's real nice. It's I mean, being homeless sucks, but if you're going to do it, Key West is an easier place to do it because there's, like, lots of their space. There's kind of food around. Yeah, the like weather's nice. Mangrove hutches and stuff yeah right? yeah i mean there's out. a there's a lot of like pseudo homeless people who like have they don't have boats like big boats with cabins but they got little boats and they yeah. kind of go well we talked about that in Liverboards. the last episode yeah um yeah we're like you can get a little dinghy and at least you've got a space to put your stuff and there's a lot of them like pulled up in the mangroves poor woman who was like sleeping on the dinghy for protection for men and then she still got she got killed by a slayer killer some dude yeah but there's a lot of those kind of boats that we see like you go into key yeah. west and you'll see them they're not pulled up on like any proper place to park them they're just kind of pulled up in the mangroves and people are in yeah. town well and people anchor there. their boats. we have there's that one boat that has like a shed on it i mean it's, yeah. it almost looks like a, a hutch on top of it and it floats around like picnic <laughs> island right yeah there's no there's a whole culture of like liveaboards people who live on their boats and some of them have real nice fancy setups and then some of them just have kind of sh- floating shacks yeah. these are not 25 million dollar yachts no. these are these are you know some platform that some yeah, someone built right. a shed on yeah <laughs> so uh anyway there's a lot of there's a ton of people it's around true. if she fell in the water there this someone would notice absolutely splash. someone would notice probably yeah um so the Key West police respond. Their motto painted on the side of their cars is serving and protecting paradise. They know what they're doing. Which is pretty nice. Um, and they do really a great job with I this think case. Monroe County and Key West, are, are they do a good job generally. Yeah. I have a good impression of those guys. I think so. Um, I mean, the nice thing is that there's not a lot of people in the Keys. <laughs> and in Florida, all the police reports are open, which is why you get all these crazy Florida man stories. And so all the news outlets we follow report on every crime. That's every true. crime. This I mean, guy's if they screwed up, then, then it would be public, too. I mean, it's probably not a bad sunshine law. It may not be a bad Yeah. Thing. No, no, no. It good works for out. reporters. Yep. Yeah. And so you don't get a lot of stuff. Where you're like, oh, like that's really shady. Yeah. Or like that seems sort of unfair. Like it's like this guy, his he had too many lobsters. And then <laughs> the, the fish and wildlife were got too him. small. The snappers were too small. We read about all of it and so yeah. you kinda see all the stuff that happens. Um And a lot of it's drugs. And most like, of it's okay, drugs. yeah, I do have the sack of methamphetamine. Yes, it's it's true. Yes, that's that, mine. The thing that you just pulled out of my pocket, that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, so the Key West police respond and they talk to the guy. They bring in a canine unit and the canine, the dog kind of sniffs around in her bag to get her scent from her clothes and then is like looking around, has no trace of her leaving the hotel room. There's no path for it to follow, which is weird if she was there overnight and then leaves in the morning because he went out to get breakfast. So she would have left in the morning. Dogs would know. Dog sees no scent. And so. Um, weird. Is she in the closet? Yeah, so they search the whole room. She's not there. Mm. They search the surrounding areas. They find, like, a pair of sandals on the beach. But, like, I think <laughs> any day you can find a pair of sandals on the beach. Yeah, that's um, not as dramatic as it sounds. Yeah. So they kind of start looking into it. And uh turns out Mike Shirley is his second wife. His first wife died apparently by suicide. She was found hanging from a noose in their basement. Jeez. And they interviewed... I think on this episode of Forensic Files, they interviewed one of the cops and he's like, yeah, seems like the guy has real bad luck with his wives. That's what I was thinking at the time. So kind of immediately the police are suspecting that like something isn't right here. I like the way he put that. Bad luck with his wives. Because if you were a real jerk, he would have said, 
kind of good luck with this one. <laughs> that would be a real jerk yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, that's good. That was nice, <laughs> detective. Uh, so they start talking to Mike, and they're like, "All right, tell us what happened, like from the time you left your house." And he's like, "All right, so we left Jacksonville. We drove down here. Uh, we got to the hotel. We checked in." For dinner last night, I went down to this bar and I ordered a chicken ranch sandwich. And they're like, how many did you order? And he's like, oh, I ordered two. And they're like, mm-hmm. And he's like, and then we went to bed. And then this morning I went out and, uh, you know, I got home and she wasn't there. Yeah, have, and- we, have we mentioned that if a wife is dead, it's usually the husband's a suspect? I mean, I think anyone who's listening to a true crime podcast had better know that the husband did it. And uh, Well, there you go. I mean, then Look, we don't need to mention this. Husbands but, of the world, if your wife dies, you're a suspect. These police officers were wondering what he was doing. Yeah. So uh, so they're like, all right, well, like, let's look into this. So first, they go talk to the bartender next door where the dude got the dinner. And they're like, what did he get for dinner? And they're like, well, he got a chicken ranch sandwich. And they're like, how many? And they're like, he got one. They have the receipt. He got one sandwich he ate a sandwich for himself yeah someone on youtube what a selfish jerk commented what can you expect from a guy who's too cheap to buy a second meal for the sake of his alibi (laughs) oh you're just giving it all away well you know he only bought one sandwich and there's no trace of the wife leaving the hotel room so hopefully our audience is quick enough to be kind of on the same page with us at this point suspense you must preserve it yeah well dude bought one sandwich fair enough then they'd look at the uh and lied about it and then also lied about and it. he lied about it. he said he, he bought two it. let's just say he lied about it but they have both the bartender and the receipt that says he bought one sandwich <laughs> the then... receipt is like a freaking alibi and it's like a sucky alibi <laughs> it's so bad so then they start checking the video footage from the toll booths on the drive down from jacksonville so i think you probably can drive for free from jacksonville to key west but the kind of most direct route takes you on some toll roads kind of like around miami mm-hmm. and so they're looking at the toll this is 2003 2003 so i think on videotape video footage <laughs> yes. they're going through like just hundreds of hours of this static (laughs) yeah and eventually they spot his car he has a white jaguar so it's sort of distinctive i wonder what his license plate says it's like a vanity oh my god that's so funny cool guy (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so I, i don't know what it actually was so they they spot it and they see him he has to stop and pay the tolls because they don't have like the sun pass or the easy pass then or at least he didn't have one so he stops to pay the tolls but it's just him in the car and now they don't tell him this they've got this footage and they're like so uh mike where'd shirley sit on the drive down and like she sat in the passenger seat and they're like did he did she ever go in the back seat he's like no she just sat in the passenger seat hard to spot yeah. and they're like well what about this does she wear a seat shaped blanket <laughs> so uh, he kind of has no huh. answer starts getting real defensive um and uh and basically can't explain the footage so then they also find video surveillance footage from a couple gas stations that he stopped at along the way this is some serious detective work they good, did good job guys. a really good job yeah. yeah pulling all this stuff and uh, they see him at these gas stations get out of the car, go in, use the bathroom, get a drink. Now, it's an eight-hour drive. There's like the convenience stores in there that have the cameras for security. That's right, yeah. No. Uh, but no sign of Shirley. She never gets out, never goes to the bathroom, never gets a drink with an eight-hour drive. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. I mean, how far can we last on our drives? Two hours? Me? Well, um, Between 20 the, minutes? <laughs> we have to take two cars because we have so many dogs. And so we're always calling each other and it's like, uh, I'm going to pee. Yeah. We're going to pull off at the next stop so I can be, because, like, that's a long drive. The problem is never the dogs. <laughs> no. It's always No, us. they get their trip out, but we're like, oh, my God, I'm drinking all this Diet Coke. Like, we got to get out. Uh, so, yeah, surveillance footage. There's no sign of her. Dinner, there's no sign of her. No one at the hotel remembers seeing her. The dogs don't see her. So the cops are basically like, all right, she clearly never made it to Key West. And so they start investigating Mike. Uh, and they go up to Jacksonville and good job guys. Yep So I mentioned his previous wife died, which is not evidence that anything happened to Shirley but So they talked to Shirley's friends and they're like, you know She went down to Key West and then she disappeared and they're like, that's weird We talked to her the day before that and she didn't say anything about a trip to Key West She had no plans to go to Key West mm. So they start looking at Mike 
Um, they go to his work. His coworkers don't know that he's married. That's... He's been married for 14 years to Shirley. I... Can you imagine? No. 14 years they've been married. No, absolutely not. They have no idea that he's married. Uh, they start looking on his computer. He's very active on Match.com. <sighs> not just like dating, but he's like sending flowers to ladies that he's just met, like doing all this stuff, and also is super in debt. So Shirley has lots of money, financially responsible, but they've, you know, so she's 55 at the time. They've been married for 14 years. So she was 41 when they got married, which isn't old. I mean, nope. I'm a year older than that, but you're like established as a human being. It's not like you're, you know, you're getting married right out of college and neither of you have any money and yeah. you're like building yeah, yeah, yeah. things together. Like you have you've, separate life. You have a life. That's right. You And, you know, we're sort of like this where like we both got married as grown-ups, like I was a little younger than this than she was. You were a little, you know, you're older than me when we got married. But we kind of had, you know, we both had jobs and houses and bank accounts and all of this stuff. And so, like, we got married, but uh, we know, had we, stuff. We each had stuff. We each had stuff, and we, you know, we have some separate finances and some merged finances, no. right? Because like we were grown-ups, and we so we haven't like aggressively forced it all into one big pot. Yeah. And it, it's just I mean, been easier. Whatever works for people works. Um, and But it sounds know, like she had her million dollar inheritance. She had her inheritance. Was. and Did I make up the million dollars? No, no. I think it was $900,000 she inherited <laughs> right. from her parents um, and seemed to be pretty financially responsible, like had the stuff really in order. Yeah. And it seems like they kept their finances separate, which is like a fine thing to do, especially good for her because he was a complete screw up. Yeah. Um, so he's a ton in debt. And. Uh, he doesn't have this money. Probably Apparently, because he's sending flowers to everyone and freaking raising his Yeah. <laughs> doesn't have access to her money. And she has sort of figured this out. The, even though their finances aren't merged, she's like, he's really financially irresponsible. And basically, I think I'm going to get out of this because he's 62. She was telling friends. That, like, she's telling friends that, you know, basically she's getting ready to file for divorce. Because um, sure. she's just like, he screws everything up. And, and obviously he's cheating, right? He's on Match.com <laughs> dating all these women. And so he's dating lots of women from Match.com, but he also has sort of a girlfriend that he met on Match.com, which is someone he's been seeing for a longer time. This is something like the police are figuring out? Yeah. The night before they allegedly took this trip to Key West, he stayed overnight with this girlfriend for the first time ever. Before, like, they'd go out on dates, but he has a wife at home, right? Which I think the girlfriend didn't know. But he stayed at her house overnight the night before this alleged trip i mean he went to key west but surely does not seem to have gone he is not a good man no <laughs> so the police are like all right they search the house there's no giant blood stains or anything there's like a couple drops no. of blood they see no body the house. no body a couple drops of blood but like that doesn't prove anything in the house that you live in people bleed in their houses all the time this is where should, they should have brought the dogs up from key west just because it's cool to have dogs. There will be dogs that reappear All right, good, in good, the good. story. Excellent, excellent. Um, so they're like, okay, uh, he probably killed her, but she's not here in the house. She's not on the property that they own up here. Um, what are we going to do? Let's just put a GPS tracker on his car and we're going to follow him around. So they haven't arrested him yet. He's just like a... Yeah, person, they don't have a body. Person of interest, as they would say today, but then it was probably just like... Someone we got a statement from. It's like not even really a crime. She's missing. Oh. But they don't even know that she's dead, right? They're like, she's probably not. They don't habeas any corpus. They, there's no corpus anywhere. Yeah. Corpus delecti, <laughs> I would say. I'm not sure that's, yes, that's, of course. There's a, a, corpus delecti, corpus, there's a missing body. Corpus missing eye. Yeah, that's what that means. I didn't make that up. That's <laughs> actually the term. Corpus delecti means there's a missing body. Mm. Yep. Uh, so they attach a GPS to his car and they start following him and they see that he drives out to the state park that has a golf course on it, Fort George Island Golf Course. And he kind of goes there. He doesn't play golf, but he's kind of near this pond. And so they bring in these cadaver dogs that search and they seem to Yay. hit. Yep, there's more dogs. They seem to hit on the pond. So the police drain the pond. They spend like a week draining this pond on the golf course, thinking they're going to find her body, and it's not there. It turns out the ducks just, the, the dogs are really like ducks. <laughs> it could be. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Can you imagine Vink as a cadaver dog? Oh she would be God. like, oh my God, there's socks here. There's socks. Socks, guys. Vink thinks every word is her name. <laughs> so, like, every smell is cadaver it's for true. Vink, I think. Uh, so, anyway, that's not her body. A couple weeks later, they're still tracking him with his GPS tracker. Um, he goes out to that park again different spot and he has brought the girlfriend with him this time and they're doing like a picnic date in the park so he parks his car the girlfriend from the night before the key yes, west trip that's right the <sighs> match.com girlfriend who he has spent the night with and has been seeing what seems like semi-regularly the cops must have been having like a great time with this like tracking device and the whole like i think they we're thought it was cool this, yeah we're monitoring this perp yeah, yeah. I mean, this episode of Forensic Files was called One for the Road, and it was all about, you know, it's like a 2004 episode, like, oh, surveillance these days, like, you're tracked all the time because there's surveillance toll cameras. Toll booth and toll cameras. Booth cameras. And it's like, oh, guys, like, shit has gotten so real since oh then. Oh, my God. It's so much <laughs> but worse. But like, they could use a GPS tracker. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, this is real high tech at the time. Um so they track him. He goes back to the park again with the girlfriend. They do like a date there. They're out in the park for a while. And the cops are like, and when they leave, the like cops a like, picnic date? I think so. Like they go to this Ugh. park and they're hanging out. Ugh. And when they leave, they're like, why do you think he chose this spot? Like, let's look around. And 30 feet away from where he parked his car with his girlfriend on a date, they find a shallow grave. And in it, they find the body of Shirley, his Ugh. wife. So basically, this he was multitasking. This date was also a chance to check the burial site for his <laughs> wife's body. And then, since everything looked okay, Jesus. then he can go ahead and do the date with his girlfriend. I mean, it's funny how, like, the, what is the expression? The, the criminal always rece- re- returns to the scene of the crime? Yeah. I mean, a lot of these things are just true. Yeah. They're just mostly true. Yeah. Not always, but mostly true. Yeah. So he's done it a couple times, okay. right? Like, not go back to that park. He cannot. He's worried. He's worried. And this is what, why... That she's going to rise from the dead and go, Jacques! I think maybe that someone found her. Uh, uh, you'd think you'd hear about it. But this is the whole point of this, like, ruse about Key West, is that he's going to say that they went down there and that she disappeared in Key West, and then all the attention is going to be focused on Key West, and no one's going to be poking around at his state park in Jacksonville where her body actually he, is. He must have known that they, like, drained the lake and dredged it. Though. Yeah, he like, would think so. What a dopey idiot he is to yeah. then go back to the park and be like, Oh, yeah, well, I guess they're done with the lake. I'm fine. Haven't found her <laughs> yet. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Let me just double check. Uh. Yeah, so it turns out, so they uh, they remove the body from the shallow grave. They do an autopsy. Uh, she's been shot with a twenty two, shot in the head, probably while she was sleeping. It looks like there's no defensive wounds or anything. So she he kind of kills her in her sleep. Um, buries her body and then comes up with this story. So she obviously was buried in the park, never went to Key West, but he's trying to throw the cops off. Badly buries her body. Badly. Yep. So, uh, so they arrest him, uh, to avoid a, what he calls, quote, high profile trophy, uh, high profile trial. That was hard to say today. High profile trial. He pleads guilty. What an idiot. What, did he see that on TV somewhere? Like, oh, high profile trial avoidance? He must be worried about, like, some other shit about him that's going to come out. Oh, yeah. He's probably dirty as hell with all the debt and stuff. Maybe he's got, like, mobsters after him or something. Yeah, or, like, weird porn on his computer. Who knows, right? Um, But anyway, he pleads guilty. He gets sentenced to life without parole. Um, So, dude got... What do you got? You know who doesn't care about avoiding a high-profile trial? God. He sees you. <laughs> yeah, Mike Carvin, you, you're not going to do too but well. Whatever yeah. version of God you believe in, there's got to be karma for this dude. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, this is Season 10, Episode 7 of Forensic Files, One for the Road. You can watch it on YouTube <laughs> if you want the, uh, the cool Forensic Files narrator telling you the story. And you can see interviews with the cops. Not everything. as good as you, though. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That is the story of Shirley Garvin's unfortunate murder by the hands of her dick husband, Mike. But, uh, at least he got caught and punished. So you ready for a palate cleanser? Dog yeah. palate cleanser. Speaking, um, again, it's not me panting. Maybe, you know, a dog palate cleanser? <laughs> dog palate cleanser. Uh, so this week's story of a good dog, 
uh, was also reported in the Dodo, which I feel like is, they collect good dog stories, so I feel like they're going to be a frequent source for us. And they have this story of this dog uh, in New Orleans, and it was, there was like a 10K race in New Orleans, and the owners brought the dog, it's this big corgi, and they're holding it, like cradling it like a baby with its like belly up on the side of the race course. And there's this great video of all these runners who are just like diverting themselves off the course to like rub the tum of this corgi. Corgi's just loving it. It's like, I'll take an extra 15 seconds to rub this belly. So this is totally me in races. <laughs> like when I run marathons or, or any race, yep. if there's a golden retriever, I like, you know, I'm divert off the course. And I'm like, can I pet your dog? And they're all like, aren't you running the marathon? And I'm like, I pet every golden retriever Aren't you I see. watching me run the marathon? <laughs> Give me your dog for Pete's sake. Yep. And if you follow me on uh, Jen Runs With Dogs on Twitter or Instagram, or especially on Instagram, uh, I, so I post like Instagram stories of all my big long training runs on the weekend. I pet every dog I come past. Yeah. What's your rule on training runs? Every dog and on marathons only golden, golden retrievers. retrievers. I mean, well, if there's another one that like wants to be pet, I'll totally jump in there. Uh, but golden retrievers in races, every dog in training runs. Hmm. And then species selective. A breedist, someone would tell me a breedist, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, I tag them. Like I'll take a picture covertly over my shoulder of the dogs, and I'll be like, "I pet." <laughs> this is my Instagram tagline, huh. uh, so you get to see all the dogs that I pet from the back. So I think it's good. That's very good support for the runners in New Orleans. Yep. So, uh, so that corgi story was cute. So we'll link to that. So anyway, there you go. That is the story of Shirley Garvin, our first like real forensic files story there's not gonna be too many because there's not a ton of forensic files that happen in the keys but uh i like it because it was resolved and the guy got convicted and jailed yes this is episode three we have episode four coming up so i had sort of promised like oh a mysterious unsolved case for episode four but gi dad really wanted this one that was resolved so for episode four i have put our unsolved mystery yeah i like solved Yeah, yeah it's better it's, it's more satisfying. Well, it's different. I mean, some people might, might like the unsolved mystery and see if they can solve it. I, I acknowledge that people are different. I like the wrapped up one where the dude's in jail. Yeah, that's always pretty good. Or, or better or worse. And frankly, if the victim is married, the husband did it. It's pretty much I mean, much really normal. pretty much. I mean, if it were ever the opposite, that would be fine too. But usually... The husband did the it. The husband's the guy. Yeah. Well... We hope you enjoyed this story. Until next week, don't cock out. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.